He spent two and a half years in hiding during the war and luckily he survived. Unfortunately, not all stories ended that way and one in particular springs to mind. Anne Frank was one of the many victims of the persecution of the Jews during World War II. Her story is told worldwide and many can relate to her time in hiding here on the Principat. I managed to speak to Marianne, who is a press officer at the Anne Frank Museum. I wanted to find out more about the Anne Frank story. Well, Anne Frank was born in Frankfurt am Main in Germany, yeah. 1929. And, um, well, there was a few years before Hitler grabbed the power. And in 1933, Otto Frank, the father of Anne Frank, decided to go to Holland because the situation for Jews, as it's known, became very critical. They came to uh, Amsterdam and they had quite some good years here uh, until Hitler declared the war to Holland in 1940 and uh, the situation for Jewish people here in, in Holland became worse and worse. Uh, the hiding place was, was not too small considering other hiding places in the war but imagining that you have to stay here for, for a long time not have to be quiet, um, hearing the bombings, knowing that if you will be betrayed, it will be the end. And being a lively girl who likes to, to flirt and go to school and be outside and play and talk with friends, having to stay here must have been horrible. So what really helped her through was her diary and going to the attic and there, there was a window that was not blind, and she could see the sky and the birds and the, and the tree. They thought they would survive. They could hear the illegal BBC radio, um, hearing about the Allies coming. Um, but uh, on August 4, 1944, they were betrayed and sent away first to Westerbork, a Dutch uh, concentration camp, and then to Auschwitz. And, uh, well, Anne and Margot died in Bergebelse, and only Otto Frank survived. During my time living here, I studied the Dutch language at the University of Amsterdam. Let's find out what the student life here is all about. Ah, oh, really great, yeah, because uh, we have two universities in Amsterdam and um, yeah, it's just amazing how many students live here and there are so many options, so many bars, so many uh, student societies. And... Well, there's just so much to do that you can always have a good time and you know where to go and it's great, it's, it's just a great place to be a student. With drugs so prevalent in Amsterdam, I was interested to know if that came into university lifestyle. At university I haven't ever seen anyone use like hot drugs but um, sometimes yeah you see people smoke a joint. Um, Dutch students don't really use that much drugs. Only, like, you have a lot of party drugs, which they use sometimes. Of course, we have a lot of fallout in the first year. And you would expect to see them sometimes a few years later in the street, and then someone has got in the gutter, you could say. It's a thing of Amsterdam. It's what sells Amsterdam to the world. So, on one hand, it's okay. But on the other hand, there's a lot more to Amsterdam than just drugs. It's time to catch the train to Amsterdam Belmere, which is 20 minutes east of Central Station. This is where Ajax play their home football. The Amsterdam Belmere train station is where all the Ajax fans get off to watch the game. It's also got quite a historic past, however. In 1992, an Israeli Boeing 747 crashed right into the centre, causing absolute devastation, up to 200 fatalities. They've recently renovated and now it's looking good again. Over to my right is a slightly more famous site, the Amsterdam Arena.
Welcome to the Amsterdam Arena. This stadium is the largest stadium in Holland with a capacity of 52,000 people. It's home to Holland's richest football club, Ajax Amsterdam, with a European pedigree unlike many other clubs. They've won the Champions League four times, 29 Dutch league titles, and they're the best team in the world. What does Ajax mean to Amsterdam? Um, Ajax means a lot for people in Amsterdam. Uh, when you think of Amsterdam, we have uh, the Red Light District, um, the Van Gogh Museum, but the most famous in Amsterdam is Ajax because we have such a huge history. Yeah, you can say every Amsterdammer is proud of Ajax. Ajax, yeah, that's beautiful. When I was a little boy, I go to the Olympic Stadium and I go to the Meer. And uh, I've been uh, in, in Vienna when we won the cup. And I was in Rome when we lost the cup the next year. But, uh, but in Vienna it was beautiful. The Klassiker, or the Classic, is Holland's most historic and famous game. It's between Ajax of Amsterdam and Feyenoord of Rotterdam. Today is Ajax against Feyenoord. Ajax fans are gathering here, waiting for the Feyenoord fans to arrive. They're going to go absolutely crazy when they come. What does the Ajax Feyenoord game mean to you? Uh, the Ajax uh, Feyenoord game, uh, you know, some Americans, they went with a plane to the moon. Yeah. It's not interesting by this event. <laughs> no. No, this is the most uh, important event uh, of the year. Right, this has been a bit of trouble. The horses and the police had to charge the Ajax fans away because there was flares being thrown, people charging forwards towards the Feyenoord fans. It all went absolutely mad. This is what a Klassika means to Ajax and Feyenoord. Ajax won the game 2-0, so I had a bit of a spring in my step on the way back to central Amsterdam. <laughs> 